let's see. This amp has a standby switch. This amp has a standby switch. This one doesn't. This one doesn't. That one does. This one does. This one does too. That sort of does. That doesn't count. That's not an amp. That's solid state. That doesn't count either. That one doesn't. That one doesn't. That one doesn't. Oh, the, the turquoise one there, the seafoam green, that one does. That one hiding underneath it does too. But that one doesn't. This one does. This one does. Shoot somebody with a staple gun. And even this one does. Okay, what the heck? Why do some of these have standby switches and what the hell is it? Doing? Okay, boys and girls, there's a really good article on this uh, up at Sweetwater's website uh, called The Great Standby Switch Myth, and it's written fairly recently, so uh, if you want to explore this topic in great depth, um, this would help you a lot. It actually tells historically where it came from and all of that kind of stuff. So the first myth that people have about standby switches um, was that it is because it is not a good idea to have anode voltage on a tube without the cathode being warmed up by the heater first. And that is applicable much more to high power transmitting radio tubes rather than the uh, guitar amp tubes per se. So nice try, but it's a good guess. In fact, there is actually a phenomena that can happen to a tube if the heater and cathode are hot, but there is no anode voltage to pick up all of those stray electrons. It's called cathode poisoning. So if you're an airhead and you turn your amplifier on, leaving the standby switch in the standby position, and then forget about it for several hours, you're actually damaging your tubes. Great. So what the heck is the point? Why do we have the standby switch? What is it even for? And believe it or not, <coughs> This is uh, definitely a Fender thing. Fender's the one guilty, and a lot of early Marshalls copied this too, um, because, well, they kind of copied the Fender amplifier. Um, by the 60s, they were pushing for amps that were louder and clearer and louder and clearer, and running the tubes at the edge of their capabilities produced a louder and cleaner sound. And uh, we have a lovely photo here of some old original capacitors that uh, <clears throat> were probably uh, in the trash by now, I would think. Um, so let's go over this briefly. The actual point of the standby switch has to do with your amplifier's filter capacitors, particularly in amplifiers that have diode rectification, okay? So let's look at a schematic real quick here. Let's zoom in on this. Okay, this is what Weber calls a 6A80. It's very much like a twin reverb. So this is our high voltage here. Um, and uh, it's going through its diodes. So we're going to have speed bumpy DC and we have 200 microfarad capacitors in series. These are probably at least 350 volt capacitors, giving us a load of 700 volts that these capacitors can take. Okay, now these amplifiers, when they ran the plates of the tubes, they were running them, you know, probably around 425, 450 volts. But if you know anything about these tubes, until, until the cathodes warm up, current doesn't start to flow from cathode to anode in these tubes. And this is an unregulated power supply, okay? 
So when you have no load on it, meaning the tubes are not drawing away the current and bringing the voltage down and pulling the voltage down, this voltage gets high. With this standby switch open, this could very well be 550, 600 volts, okay? Now, these capacitors out here, these 20 microfarads, these are probably 450 volts, maybe 500 if you're lucky. Capacitors that are above 500 volts rated are really expensive, okay? So this is kind of a cost-cutting measure, if one will to be able to use the 450 or 500 volt caps that cost less money, okay? So what we've got is when we first flip our amp on with the standby switch open, we have a ridiculous amount of uh, power built up here, we'll say about 600 volts, and our two in-series 350 volt capacitors are capable of 700 volts here so these are not going to blow up but if our tubes were not yet warm okay not these tubes uh, the power tubes primarily if these tubes were not yet warm and could not conduct if they're not conducting there's nothing to pull this voltage down from the 600 volts. So what we want to do is when we turn the amp on, we want to give the amp about a minute, 30 seconds to a minute and a half or so before we flip the standby switch. By that point, the filaments of all of the tubes have gotten warm. Okay, that's where we get the lovely tube glow. And the tubes will begin to conduct. So immediately after throwing the standby switch, if our tubes are warm, these capacitors, the tubes will draw the voltage down to below the 450 volts for that uh, the capacitors are rated for. So if you have a higher powered amplifier, such as... Uh, like a twin reverb or something like that and you are you know having the standby switch in the closed or operate position when you're flipping it on there's a potential that these capacitors um, on these rails are going to see too much voltage and they could potentially go boom this actually there's a couple of amps that had an issue where the first capacitor before the standby switch was not highly rated enough for voltage and this first filter would eat it all the time so that's why they're doing these two in series so you have an astronomical amount of voltage but if one were to look at the pricing like a 20 microfarad cap rated at uh, 450 to 500 volts they're i don't know uh five to six dollars something like that for a typical capacitor you know premium might cost i don't know eight or nine but when you jump into a 600 volt capacitor for example the price is going to over go to twice as much so the standby switch was actually put in there by leo fender as a cost cutting measure oh boy okay so now that we know why the standby switch was created to protect the filter capacitors from high voltage resulting from tubes that don't conduct because they're not warmed up yet. What happens in an amp that doesn't have a standby switch? Well, it's very simple. If the manufacturer opted to not put a standby switch, it's probably because the tubes do not run at the bleeding edge of their voltage. If the amp has 450 volt caps, but the normal plate voltage of the amp is you know, probably about 350, eh, you know, you may get close to 450 at peak when you flip it on, but the capacitors can take it. So that said, how do we use the standby switch? We use it to warm up our tubes for about one minute before applying the high voltage to them. If we do something silly, like use the standby switch as a mute switch while we take a bathroom break, um, 
we're actually damaging our tubes through what they call cathode poisoning. Now this takes a couple of hours, so if you did it, you know, for a minute or two now and then, you probably didn't really do much, but a heated cathode that has no anode current uh, allowed to, you know, because there's no anode, or there's no anode voltage, so there's no current flowing through the tube. It sort of builds up a cloud of electrons that, with nowhere to go, and it builds a chemical layer up on the cathode of the tube, and the tube will end up testing weak. If you recall, we had a Fender Concert amp that had a failed tremolo because the plate resistor or anode resistor, whichever you prefer to call it, uh, was open that tube couldn't function and as a result when I put that tube in my tester it showed as being weak. So if you fire your amp up to play a show and you need to take a short break just turn your guitar down to zero or turn your amp volume down to zero for your short breaks and if you're going to be gone for I don't know more than a half an hour just turn your amp off. It only takes a few minutes to warm up a tube amp. And now that you're armed with that knowledge, hopefully you will be a more responsible tube amp owner. Thanks for watching and have a great day.